Hey everybody, welcome to this demonstration of installing Windows Server 2008 R2. My name is Bill Grismore. Nice to have you here in this video presentation. So yes, we're going to do a very simple demonstration of installing Windows Server 2008 R2. However, we are going to do this installation inside VMware Workstation 8 just because it makes for a very simple demonstration. Now keep in mind that even though we're using VMware Workstation 8, the actual installation steps are actually the same whether it's a virtual machine or whether it's a physical machine. Uh, the only difference is, is that the way we boot up to the CD is done by pointing to an ISO instead of having a physical CD slash DVD in our server. But all the basic software steps we go through are, are very similar if not exactly the same. So you really won't see any differences at all between installing the operating system into a, a virtual machine in VMware Workstation 8 versus a physical machine. So it makes for a great uh, demonstration. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, since we are doing this in VMware Workstation, I will go ahead and show you how to do things inside VMware Workstation if you want to do this in your home lab or at your office lab, whatever the case may be. So we're going to slide this down a little bit and we're going to go ahead and show you uh, VMware Workstation. And what we're going to do is create a brand new virtual machine. So this is a brand new VM. And we're going to go through the wizard to create a brand new VM. Now what you see in the background is an already existing virtual machine that's a router. And uh, the reason we show this here is that when we get done building the machine, you know we're going to have internet access, right? So this router is going to provide that internet access for us and it'll help us understand the IP configuration that we're actually assigning to the machine when it's done. So we click next for a custom install. It's VMware Workstation 8. And what we're going to do is point to an ISO. Now I've already downloaded the ISO. Something that I like to use, which I think is pretty cool, is I subscribe to something called TechNet Plus. And TechNet Plus gives me access to all the different ISOs of all the Windows operating systems. So I'm going to point to that. And we're going to click Next. And we're going to choose 2008 R2 Data Center. And right here at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop in my license key. I'll be right back. So this is a really cool feature in VMware Workstation where we can actually go in and we can put our product key in, specify the version of the operating system, the username and the password, and it'll automatically log me in as that user when the installation is over if I check this off. Right? Uh, I'm going to leave that unchecked for now, but just understand that this is something very specific just to um, VMware Workstation. If, if I'm doing a build on a physical server, of course I'll be prompted for the product key I'll have to pick the type for my install as I go through the installation. So it kind of eliminates one step that we would normally see, but either way you'd have to pick it so it doesn't matter whether you see it here in VMware Workstation or if it was in the actual install. So we'll click Next and we're going to give this machine a name. Now we can call this whatever we want. If this was a plain old file server, we could call it File Server 1. Now I'm going to be using this machine for a uh, future demonstration for a domain controller. So I'm going to go ahead and, and name it DC1. Now, even though the name of the machine is DC1, that doesn't make it a domain controller. It's still just a plain old file server, right? So when it comes up, you know, it's going to be DC1 uh, without any Active Directory installed on it. So basically, it'll still be just a plain old server. I'm going to browse to the location where I want those files to be. Now, in this demonstration, I'm using my laptop and I have a solid state hard drive. So I'm going to be putting this on my C drive. Now I normally wouldn't place the virtual machine files on my C drive, but it's just solid state so it's pretty fast. Now just keep in mind, this step that I'm showing you right here, if this is a physical machine, uh, you wouldn't be doing this at all. This is just something that's part of VMware Workstation to specify where to locate the virtual machine files. If you had a physical server, you would just be popping the CDN uh, going into the BIOS, make sure the machine's configured to boot to the CD or DVD, and then just booting the machine up, making sure that the um, hard drives are properly connected to the right controllers, whether they're IDE or SCSI in your system before booting. So we'll click Next. And another cool feature in VMware Workstation is the ability to give it a certain number of CPUs. We'll just leave it at the default. And the memory we can bump up a little bit here. We'll give it 2 gig, approximately. And then the networking, we'll modify that here in just a minute. And the standard logic adapter, the LSI Logic SAS adapter. 
Uh, again, the adapter in a physical machine will depend on what type of adapters you have in your physical box, right? And then we're going to create a brand new virtual disk and click next. And we're going to have a SCSI disk and we're going to give it a single disk file and 40 gigs should be good enough. The install is probably around, um, I don't know, 10 to 15 gig. And this will be the disk file name. And we're going to customize the hardware and we can see that we currently don't have a network adapter. So we're just going to add one network adapter here for this install. And we're going to put it on something called custom VMNet 2. Now if you look at my router that I have in the background, which is this other server that's already built, I'm going to put this virtual machine on the same network. And this is on the 10.10.10x network with a 255.255.255 mask. So I'm just establishing in my virtual machine what the default virtual network is that I'm going to be plugged into. If this was a physical machine, I would just have a network card with a cable plugged into my switch or maybe into a VLAN. And we can close that out and click finish. And now we're going to switch over to this other virtual machine and we can go ahead and power on that virtual machine. And if we slide this up a little bit, you can even see more details here of that virtual machine and its information. There we go. That looks pretty good. And we'll power that guy up. Now, as I power up the VM, some of these windows move around a little bit. So I'll slide this guy up so you can see uh, everything in the windows. So I might slide the screen around a little bit on you just to make sure we keep a good quality HD picture and, and get everything in the uh, video for you. So we're starting windows and the install, I have to tell you, you know, the basic install of Windows Server 2008 is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. You know, even though I'm doing it in a virtual machine, it's very simple, uh, just as it would be on a physical machine, very easy to get installed. And it's going to go through its copy file process. So it's going to uh, copy the files, expand them, extract them, install the features, install any updates if it has internet access, and then complete the uh, installation. And we're going to go through a couple reboots as we go through this process. This would be my initial boot as I would officially, you know, just like I would turn on a physical computer. And at this point, it's going to do a restart. We'll go ahead and let it do its restart. And setup is now preparing your computer for first use. Almost there. Preparing your desktop. And it's going to do one more reboot. And our server is ready. So we're going to go in here. Now in a VMware environment, uh, in this case VMware Workstation, I have to do a control alt insert. Once I click in the window here to log in. And I'm going to select administrator and I'll have to change my password for semi login. I'll use capital P at sign SSW zero RD just to give myself complexity. And it changes the password. And now it's going to prepare a profile for this brand new administrator that's logging in that very first time. Okay, so now for all essential purposes, our server is up and running and installed, but I do not have a DHCP server on my network, so I don't have an IP address, and I haven't changed the name. Now, I did specify the name as DC1 for the virtual machine, but I haven't actually named the guest in the VM yet. So we're going to right-click on the computer, and server manager is going to come up as well. Now these screens that pop up, you can leave these splash screens coming up if you want. Uh, personally, uh, I prefer to go ahead and close them out, especially now just for demonstration purposes. Uh, we can look at all those features a little bit later on. So I'm going to right click on the computer and go to properties and I'm going to rename this computer. And I'm going to change the name to DC1. Now you can name this computer anything you want. Uh, the only reason I'm naming it DC1 is because I plan in the future to install Active Directory on this 
virtual machine. Uh, if you want to have it to be a file server, call it file server one, call it Darth Vader two, call it whatever you want. Uh, just name the machine when you're done. You don't want to leave these default randomly generated names on your machines. We'll apply that change. And whenever you change the name of the machine, it's going to require a reboot. So we're going to change the name of the computer right here. And click OK. And that computer name chain is going to require a reboot. So we'll click OK. And don't make the mistake, as I almost did there, of changing the computer description and not changing the computer name. I do it all the time. I have students in my classes do it all the time. It's a very easy mistake to make. This is not the computer name. This is just the description. This will not force you to reboot. So if you ever type in a new name and it doesn't reboot, you can probably you know figure out right away you forgot to actually change the name. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and reboot the computer now. Sometimes it's better to uh, make a mistake and see the mistake than to get it right the first time. I always say that. So very important to make sure you rename the computer. It's going to come back up. And now the last step we have is to give it a static IP address. Now if you worked in an environment where you have a DHCP server, you might just go ahead and let it get an IP address from a DHCP server or whatever, you know, your router or whatever you're using for DHCP. But since it is a server class machine, you're probably more likely to give this machine a static IP address than you would to just allow it to obtain an IP address from a DHCP server. Okay, so definitely something to keep in mind. So we're going to go into our networking. We'll go right here. And we're going to first, I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to call it LAN. If I ever need to refer to the name of this adapter, if I'm using a group policy, whatever it might be, it's a lot easier to refer to this adapter name as LAN than local area connection. So you don't have to change the name of your adapter if you don't want to. It's just something I do for a management standpoint. And then IP4. And we're going to give this guy an IP address of 10.10.10.100. .10 .10 now we're picking that IP address because we know that he's on the 10.10. network by looking at our router. So if I'm on a network, I got to figure out what IP to assign. So I'd go to my my network team or I'd look at my my network configuration that I have whether it's in my house or small business or a large large corporation and I figure out what the IP address is of my gateway. I'm plugging my network into the same VMnet2, the same virtual network. So we're on the 10.10.10 network. And I'm just picking that address. There's no particular reason why I'm picking that address other than it gives me some room to play with there. Now my gateway will be the IP address of my router. That is my gateway. And my DNS server also lives up on that router. So I'll point to him as well for that. Now in the future, I am going to turn this into a domain controller. And eventually, you know, once this guy becomes a domain controller, he'll point to himself for DNS because he'll have DNS installed locally. But just for a plain old server, you're going to point to whatever your corporate DNS server is. You'd probably also specify a alternate DNS server. You can even go in here and have even more than that listed if you choose to. And we'll click OK on that. And we now have a active network card. And if we check real quick, once this guy makes a connection, sometimes it takes a minute for it to refresh. Let's just go out there and see if we can ping it and see if that will give us uh, some access here. Sometimes you got to hit it once for it to kind of come alive. And we'll do a 10.10.10.1 and we can ping it. And let's see if our DNS is good. So we'll go into NS lookup real quick. And we'll see if we can resolve a name. Uh, let's try google.com and it's not picking that up for us. You know, I may not actually have DNS configured, 
So the reason it's showing me no internet is not because I actually don't have access to the internet. It's just that this machine is acting as a router. I don't believe, let me just look and see if I have DNS installed on this box. Yeah, no, I don't have any DNS on this box, so I can't actually demonstrate that internet access. But, you know, if I did have DNS installed here, he would be able to get out to the outside world and resolve names. So he's actually routed out. He just doesn't have any DNS to get out. But we're good. We have a properly configured server and everything's good to go in this box. And that's how easy it is to actually, you know, install your server. So it's, it's quite easy. You know, let me do this. Let me just pop over to my router real quick and install DNS on him just so we can see that work real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so just to show you real quick what I did now, on your own personal network, this could be completely different, but I'm pointing to a server that actually has DNS installed. So if you're like a home user or a small business, this might actually be a DNS server that lives out of your ISP. So just understand that there's got to be DNS out there to be able to resolve names on the internet. So like I said before, I had my server installed. I had a right network configuration. I could actually get to the internet and ping IP addresses on the internet. I just couldn't resolve names. So what I'm doing right now is just showing you how I have DNS installed now on this router, right? This is that router box, right? This is a router and we have DNS installed on this router. And what we did is we went to the properties of the router that now has DNS installed and we configured something called a forwarder. And there's a well-known internet DNS server out there, which is 4221. And we can see that we're pointing out to that server. And after adding that uh, DNS service and just that one pointer, we can now come back over to our, our server, our file server, and we can actually go to our command prompt and we can go into uh, NS lookup to verify that we have name resolution and we can just type in a name and we can see that we can resolve all those names. So if I open up my browser, I should be able to gain access to a website somewhere out there. So let's go ahead and try it. And we can see that we can get access here. We'll add that in there. Now, one thing you might want to do if you're going to use your server for browsing, there is a feature that is turned on by default inside Server Manager, which is called the Internet Explorer Enhanced Security. And we're going to go into Configure Internet Explorer Security here. This Enhanced Security Configuration, we're going to turn that off. Because every time I try to use my web browser, it forces me to add sites to my trusted sites list on my server. So I usually turn that guy off. So now when I go to uh, open up my web browser, it'll have more of a feel like a workstation. I can just go to my site. Now I've already added that one, but if I put in a different site, I would actually see that I can connect and I'm not getting prompted like that anymore. So that's pretty cool. So there you go. Your server is up and running installed. We have an IP address. Uh, we have a brand new computer name. We're able to route our way out to the internet and we have a functional Windows Server 2008 uh, file server. We'll see you in the next video.